Hey, hello, my name is Eric and I'm from Games by Hyper. Today I would like to show you how to migrate another module, another project into one of the multiplayer survival templates. It's good to know, uh, I will currently use the skill level manager as an example right here, but this process also should apply for other modules. In general, the first things that you need to do is make sure that you have the right project settings, the right plugins enabled of your target project. If you have a multiplayer survival template, you can always check uh, what kind of plugins are required and what kind of plugins are enabled by opening uh, one of the U project files. You do that by editing it with a notepad, it doesn't matter which notepad. And you can see, okay, these are all the plugins that I have enabled in this current project. But if you look at one of the source projects, you can also check that one and see, hey, these uh, are the plugins enabled. So I should also enable these in the other one. I I'm just using these as an example, and I'm quite sure that all of these plugins are also enabled in uh, this one, like uh, so. Oh yeah, the enhanced input, but the enhanced input is by default enabled in 5.3 so that's not a plugin that you need to enable manually anymore when you have made sure that your target project has all the current plugins enabled that are required also make sure that all your configs are set up especially uh, trace channels uh, the collision channels uh, physical materials things like that you can always find the most important settings in the default engine.ini. If you open that one, you will see, hey, there are uh, these are the collision profiles that are enabled, uh, 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 the default channel responses of uh, interaction. And uh, this one is set to uh, uh, static object false, etc. But it's good to know if you use uh, the project settings like this, uh, the numbers of these uh, trace channels are really important to have the same in your target project because uh, they are used internally as an enumerator and this enumerator, enumerator is referencing to that specific number. So please make sure it is the same one. And also take a look at things like fiscal services, things like that. Most of the ones you can just find in normal project settings, but checking the files, just make sure they are correct. Uh, for the skill level manager and to any of the survival templates, it really doesn't matter because the survival templates already have the right settings. If you migrate one to another, please do not copy paste like the content folder and paste it over here, but open up a project and make sure that your target project is closed. And after that, you can just press migrate, uh, uh, keep the files, and then uh, select the content browser of your target project and make sure uh, to transfer them all. So now I've opened up my uh, module, in this case, the uh, level manager. I can press on the hyper folder, right mouse button, migrate. Uh, everything should be selected by default correctly and just press OK and then select your target folder. For this example, I'm selecting the MST Pro. I select the content folder and I press select folder. It will now show a pop-up. Do you want to override the files? And you have uh, 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 the choice or we're going to override all the existing files or we are not going to do that. If you override all the existing files, it will, um, uh, I'll, it will make sure that the last version that you're currently uh, of the module that you have are overriding to the target project, that that will be always the last one. However, it will also mean that it will override the existing data tables. And in this specific module, uh, the skill level manager only has like 10 example items, some feathers, some books, a sword, etc. So that will mean that in your uh, target project, all your data tables are overridden, so you need to re-import them again. It should uh, basically for nearly all modules work to not override it. Uh, and that will make sure that you maintain uh, the correct data tables of your target project. However, 
let's just as an example override everything uh, so we need to restore the data tables to the original state let's do this and uh, i will be right back so i just finished uh, the, uh, the migration and it has offering all of the data tables so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to open my project to which i migrated everything uh, after closing this one down MSD Pro. And now I will open up this project and navigate to the module I just migrated. And I will see that it has the blueprints of that specific module now in this project. But as I said, the data tables, like DT items, they are also overwritten. So they are completely cleared now. And we need to reset. If you didn't overwrite the files, uh, then your data tables would probably still be the same. I will show you a couple of methods right now uh, how you can restore the data table. The first option of restoring the data tables is always the most uh, uh, secure one, easy one. The only thing that you need to do is go to your Epic Games Vault. By default, it's in your program data, Epic, Epic Games Launcher, Vault Cache, and here you find all the things that you've downloaded from the marketplace and there you can find the original files of one of the systems mine are called hyper something and you need to navigate to them you can open them and check the content browser well this is the mst pro that's the one that we wanted so we open up the content browser and here we can find the data tables so let's search them and copy paste them manually into our current project and then it should be restored you can do two things. The first thing is search for the data tables manually and uh, try to replace them one by one that you need. Uh, just as an example, if you only need the data table items, you go to the core folder, go to the inventory system, data model, data tables, and here you have the data table US. You can control C them and you can paste them here in the same folder. However, if you don't want to do everything manual one by one, you can also change uh, uh, multiple files. Uh, and in this example, I think it's purely fine if we just copy paste the whole core folder because it will replace all the data table. So I press Ctrl C on the core here. And I need to make sure that my current project is closed, my current MST. And I paste them manually like here and says, oh, uh, do you want to replace all of them? And I want to, sure. And now when I open up the project again and look at the data tables, you see they are the original ones uh, that I had in the MST Pro. This is just an example for if you by accident offer, uh, overwritten them uh, uh, or you did it uh, on purpose, it doesn't really matter, but this is just one of Let's uh, navigate to the core folder, go to dt underscore items, and we open it up. And we will see it has all the items back again from uh, the MST Pro, the original ones. The other way is re-importing them manually. So that is if you have access to the support forms, that we have a lot of files there, also the Excels, JSONs, etc and can try to re-import them with a file and select the JSONs which are uh, needed for that specific project. The first thing that I always want to do when I migrate to the new module, just like this level manager, is to just make sure it works. So I open the example map and I press play. This will, oh, I will press play on location. Play from here. And I will check if it works. And you see up oh, the level, the XPs are going up. This is perfect, uh, what we wanted. We see it here in the UI. So everything seems to work fine. Obviously you can test more, but basically uh, this is sufficient uh, uh, for this specific test. If you have any problems in this stage, so you set up the project settings, you made sure the plugins are, and you see errors, etc. Obviously, something went wrong. So check your project settings, check your plugins, check if you migrated everything well, and check if you have the right data tables. If you have all of them, there 
should be none, uh, uh, no error uh, 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 in your screen. None of them. After you have migrated the module, it doesn't mean it automatically works or is assigned. Basically, all functionality should work. However, um, in this example, we have uh, added a level manager, but the level manager is a component, and the component is not assigned to the character that we use. So you can open up the character uh, that we use. In this example, I used it. this one. And what I will do is I will add the level manager. And this is the one that I have migrated. I either press compile and save. Now we have assigned a component. There are some couple of other things that we need to check. Some modules use extra UI elements. And the level manager also uses UI elements like the level up in the in-game menu, but also in the in-game HUD. So we need to change that. First of all, you can search for the HUD class that is assigned to this current character, and that's the HUD MSD Pro. We can open it up, and there we see two references to the in-game HUD itself. That's this one, and the other one is the in-game menu. So we can open that one. And now we are going to search for the HUD uh, in-game and also for the menu that is assigned in the level manager. To be 100% sure I find the right one, I open up the level manager example and I search for the level manager HUD. And I open the level manager in-game HUD and the level manager in-game menu. The in-game HUD has two UI elements, this one and this one. You can see they are assigned here. I can press Ctrl C and navigate to this one and paste them right here. If you want, you can reposition them to your own liking. And besides only copy pasting, uh, always check uh, just to be sure is there any custom code in the graph uh, that's needed? If it doesn't work well, just check it, just to be sure. Uh, for the level manager, I don't think we need custom code. Everything is already perfectly assigned in these widgets. Uh, but if you have another module, please check that out. Let's also do the same for the in-game menu. And what we see right here is we see uh, we have the UI player attributes with skill level. And if we navigate to the one that we have assigned, we see hey, it is only UI player attributes. So we can search for that one UI uh, player attributes with skill levels. Okay, this is a new one. I am pasting it under this one. Let me rearrange it a bit. And uh, I will remove the attributes one because we don't need that one anymore because that one is included right here. And I want it to be able to be uh, present in the top bar, like this one. So instead of the old uh, UI player attributes, because we deleted that one, I'm selecting our new widget. And if you want, you can rename it to attributes and levels. Press compile. We get some errors, and that's because we removed that one. And let's make sure to replace that one with the one that we just assigned. I think that's this one. Like so. I just press compile to see if there's another place of an error. No. And now we are finished with this UI. So we now have prepared our UI, uh, uh, the in-game menu, the in-game HUD. We also assign a component to the character. Uh, and let's check if everything works. What we can do, just to test it out, uh, for this example, the level manager, uh, we can have these variables here in the DT items. And you can have, okay, like, it has level attributes. This is just an... Uh, this is just a placeholder. This one doesn't do anything. This is more like if you want to make World of Warcraft style things like, oh, this is a level 20 sword, you can use this one. But this one doesn't do anything at this moment. What is implemented, it is has required skill level to use. Uh, for fiber, it isn't logical. 
Uh, but let's say uh, if we are uh, uh, picking this one up, we get XP. And uh, what the amount of XP that we get is uh, 55. So we just advance to the next level. I think it's 50 for one level. Let's make it 60 in the skill of foraging. And now let's also do the steel sword. I think the basic steel sword. Or let me check the right. I meant to search for the iron sword. So the basic iron sword, let's uh, assign, it requires a skill level to use. So for equipment, it is, okay, you need a certain level of something to be able to equip this one. And let's make this foraging one. And let's say we need to be level two. Sure thing. We can also assign uh, a gain XP for crafting. So if you and make it in a, a furnace or something, you gain XP in a certain uh, uh, area. That will also work. But now we assigned XP to the fiber and also a required level to use for equipping a sword. Let's test it out. I'm spawning here at the cabin and I know there's some fiber around here. So let's pick this one up. Nice. So you see, I'm leveling up to level two, etc. Uh, in the attributes level, we now have this UI. You see it is gaining uh, that XP. And in the inventory, I have this basic iron sword and it's requiring level two of foraging to use. We just assigned it in the data table. So now we are able to equip it. Um, this one needs level three of character. I just did that uh, outside of the video. So now if I try to equip it, it doesn't do anything and I just have this print statement for now uh, just to show uh, it. Uh, you're not able to equip it. But this one, we just uh, advanced to level 2, so now we are. I think this should give a good example on how to migrate a module into uh, one of the other templates. Um, to recap, make sure you have the project settings uh, set up right and make sure you have the right plugins enabled. Uh, make sure you have the right data tables uh, aside. Play the example map. If the example map has errors, something was wrong. Uh, make sure to add the component to your character and uh, uh, update any UI if needed. And uh, just experiment with it, uh, like here in the data table, and everything should work fine. I hope this video helps you. If you have questions, please always feel free to reach out. And I hope you have a really nice day. Bye. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.